if the person had asked me, the, the, the lecturer had asked me, so with your speech, how do you envisage your career going? That would have been a completely different way of showing me the same um, obstacle I had, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. allowing me to have more, more onus of it and to mm-hmm. hopefully uh, pro- produce a response to it, which would make them have uh, a, a moment of pause. So... Mm. That's all come with getting older and um, experiencing more of life. But at that age, I was very impressionable and um, very sensitive. And mm. I think if I hadn't have had that response when I did, it would have changed the whole course of my life. Yeah, it's a funny thing. I, I think I know that like now there are actually people who get passionately uh, into VHS collecting. And uh, yeah. what I've heard from, uh, the, I don't know if you um, listen to the indie film Hustle at all uh, with Alex Ferrari or he's got a few different, he's got the um, bulletproof writing or something like that. Um, and uh, he was talking about just different ways of making money in film nowadays and how it's quite different to, you know, I guess the old days where you could um, potentially get it broadcast and, and make all your money back there. Um, but in the horror scene, apparently, they, for whatever reason, uh, really like niche horror movies on VHS. So, you know, that's, um, yeah, I think it's one of the good things about the size of the world like now is that there's so many people and because of social media uh if you kind of put yourself out there that you're interested in particular kind of things you can sort of end up i think the ability to have sort of uh like happenstance or you know serendipity can sort of flow uh a little bit more smoothly and you know you can just end up um finding your own tribe i guess yeah so all right so yeah so you go to film school and um had, so you hadn't you did you did English so, so that I was interested in when the acting part came in because it looks as though you've done a little bit of acting um, in your uh, life so far. Yes, um, I was a middle child and I was uh, a very imaginative child, so I always had the need to be seen, be heard, and to stand out from the crowd. Um, the first time I remember acting would have been in kindergarten, funnily enough. Um, I think they could tell that even at that age uh, of the class, I was one of the more uh, prepared to get up onto the stage and not flub the whole thing. Um, but it was a, a uh, very five-year-old uh, recreation of um, a Disney classic. And we... Uh, were quite silent apart from a line or two here but it was all uh, choreographed and um they could tell during the rehearsals of it that i didn't forget the choreography to it so uh when it came to actually making my own shorts in high school and so on i just needed to connect with people who um had the same uh, ability to step out of themselves and into a character and that's um, Mm what's always attracted me to actors now is that they can drop their own ego and become what's um, in place. Mm. Uh, I don't know if I take my own acting as a priority because I don't um, project that as my my main focus, but I can mm. do it and I do do it. Um, mm. Even with the stuff I, I'm making now, I, I put myself into those parts, uh, mostly because as an actor, those parts aren't coming to me. I, I don't think I've come across many other um, writers or filmmakers who are exploring the same things that I am and uh, wanting Mm. to take as many risks as I do. So it isn't that I think I am um, the best actor around. I think I'm actually quite limited in in many ways, but I, I think if I was to sit back on my laurels waiting for people who come to me with their work, I'll be waiting a long time. And it's just a way for me to not go stale in the waiting. So Mm. that's why I do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I assume you've acted in a variety of parts, sort of ranging from the lead to um, to uh, to some Supporting. others. I'm just going to bring up. There's a video there. Uh, if if I didn't believe in you from the last five years, which I uh, performed in uh, Auslan in in sign language, and yes. um, that uh, is funny enough part of what I made in uh, HSC was a short film um, about sign. Um, 
I uh, had grown up with a stutter and it was quite debilitating to the point where I thought I'm just not going to speak at all. And wow. when I approached the film school um, to uh, be a student there, and I got the scholarship and all the rest, as we were going through the uh, the course, one of the uh, teachers, professors, I don't know what they were there, but one of the lecturers told me verbatim, um, you probably shouldn't aim to be a director because you stutter and people won't have the patience for that, might want to choose mm. a different career. And I was mm. devastated. I thought, mm. so uh, once the initial shock wore off, um, there came that innate, um, well, I'll show you part of my personality, that very stubborn, um, if you tell me no, I'll, I'll, I'll prove it's, it's a yes kind of thing. So I um, wrote this uh, little piece, uh, which has now, now become a silent agreement, this, this, this film I made, where a uh, protagonist has a stammer and meets a deaf person and thinks, oh, cool, this is a deaf person, someone who I can never speak with and I can just learn their language and just uh, get around my issue that way. But as is what happened with me, um, the deaf person told me, you have the skill, you have the ability, and I will I will teach you to sign, but if you dare use it as your main uh, communication skill, no. So that mm. was a fair trade. I, I learned the language and we had a, a great relationship for um, about five, six years. And uh, then he passed away suddenly. And I thought, well, mm. I've had this this um, uh, journey with him. I want to now bring it to film as a as a um, tribute to that and mm, uh, to, 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 to my own uh, healing and growing from that. So I still sign, and I, I I was doing it a lot with um, with music and uh, to songs because that's a good way to um, get time, pacing, and expression. Mm. And when I made a silent agreement, uh, it was really taking that story to a cinematic level, and um, a lot of catharsis came from that. Wow! Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's quite a. Uh bit of a heavy story really um in some some areas but clearly you've over you know clearly you've overcome um the the stuttering and you know i wouldn't have i didn't pick that at all i actually thought uh i thought that you were gonna have maybe a, a deaf sibling like a brother or a sister or something like that you know where you'd um where you'd learned to sign so that's pretty amazing i mean how did you like from that point um you know, have, having somebody say, "Hey, this is probably not the, the pathway for you." What were the? <laughs> but you decided, you know, we'll look, you know, stuff you and and, uh, and I've I've got I've got that. Uh, I think I've got maybe almost a dash too much of that uh, in, in, in myself. But uh, so, how did you progress? Like, how did you, I guess, p yeah, I mean, improve your speech to the level that you're at now? Right. Um... I would say a lot of my articulation um, was there. I had the, the, the vocabulary for it. I shouldn't have the uh, the, the motor skills of um, the breath, the the enunciation, the uh, way of uh, expressing how I wanted to in a way which was going to be understood. I know that I speak quickly and I always have, but uh, to people who like aren't Australian, people who are foreign and hear me, um, they have a bit of issue now and then just because of my accent, whatever it is, and, yeah. um, and, yeah. <laughs> and my pace of speaking. So I find being quite gestural has helped with that. Um, and it's been, uh, a lot of it's just, just been practice. So um, broadly, uh, hearing that my speech was going to be an issue and it was going to um, steer me away from the career which I was really leaning into having that innate ability to um just sort of know sort of in my in my gut that this person is wrong and to hear an authority figure someone who is by design meant to um encourage and support you the student mm. um and see that as maybe they're not right <laughs> uh mm. was a bit of a mind flip for me but um i think Nobody has ever liked to be told what to think. No one has ever mm. uh, taken on board um, advice <laughs> when its its intention is to dis 
discourage somebody or to or to take away the merit of what they're trying to do. I think people respond a lot mm. more to um, the curiosity or yeah. to the the um, if the person had asked me, the, the lecturer had asked me, so with your speech, how do you envisage your career going? That would have been a completely different way of showing me the same um, obstacle I had, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. allowing me to have more, more onus of it and to mm-hmm. hopefully uh, pro- produce a response to it, which would make them have uh, a, a, a moment of pause. So... Mm-hmm. That's all come with getting older and um, experiencing more of life. But at that age, I was very impressionable and um, very sensitive. And mm. I think if I hadn't have had that response when I did, it would have changed the whole course of my life. Wow. Yeah, that's really full on, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, that's amazing. I mean, I just, I, I'm just excited that you've overcome that obstacle, you know, let alone, I guess, what you've been able to then do in terms of um, film and yeah, you know, and I guess uh, suffering, you know, significant loss and stuff like that. These are, I guess, some of the the war wounds, I guess, that we have as you grow.